let's delve a little bit more into BMI and the issues with it. So first off, what is BMI? It's body mass index. It is basically just a measurement of, it's a, it's a measurement of, you know, your weight compared to your height, essentially, right? Yeah. So it's calculated by dividing your weight in kilograms by the square of your height in meters. You could also think of that as dividing your weight in kilograms by your height in meters, and then dividing the answer that you get from that by your height in meters again. So, for example, uh, if you were to weigh 100 kilograms uh, and you were... Gosh, let's just do this simply. <laughs> you were two meters tall. <laughs> <laughs> you could divide 100 by two squared, which is four. Yeah. So divide 100 by four, BMI of 25. Mm -hmm. Or you could uh, divide it by divide 100 by two. You got 50, and then divide it by two again, 25. Yeah. Right. Same answer. Gotcha. Right. It's just easier to think of it as being squared. So obviously the the units for BMI, the units which are never shown, would be kilograms over meters squared. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. looks like it's like, <laughs> which almost looks like it's, uh, you know, uh, pressure, right? Yeah. Killing us from each other. But it's not, <laughs> it's, that's, not what it, that's not what it is. That's not what it is. Uh, so, what are the issues with BMI? Do you know any, what, any issues with BMI? Well, the biggest one is if you're really muscly, then you get a very inaccurate reading relative to like something like obesity because muscle weighs a lot more than fat does. And so, if you've got loads of muscles, you're going to look like you're overweight or obese. Mm -hmm. when actually you're just swole. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so muscle has a higher density than fat. Like muscle tissue has a higher density than fat tissue. And what that means is that for every, like, you know, whatever volume you've got of muscle. So let's say you have one cup of muscle, <laughs> a single cup of yes. muscle, and you have also a single cup of fat. Now those are the same volume, yeah. right? They, they, they occupy the same space. They fill the cup up exactly the same as each other. Yeah. But you put them on the scales. The muscle is heavier. The muscle is going to be heavier yeah. than muscle's the fat. Overweight. Because <laughs> the, the muscle is more dense, right? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you, you've hit the nail on the head there. BMI, and it's not just having excess muscle and all that sort of thing. BMI doesn't give you a picture, a clear picture of someone, you know, and their and their weight and their, their fat tissue and their other tissues in the yeah. body. BMI tells you someone's weight in relation to their height. Someone can have a higher weight through having higher muscle mass. Mm -hmm. um, they can have a lower weight from having like, you know, low fat mass and low muscle mass. And, you know, they could also like have visceral fat, yeah. but still like a, a sort of lower sort of uh, body fat mass, right? There are, there are so many different factors involved in sort of health and weight and fat and other tissues. And BMI just says, nah, weight and height. It is useful. Don't get me wrong. BMI is pretty bloody useful. It's usually pretty good at giving you an estimate, right? Like, it, like in terms of um, wh when I say it's useful, what I mean is that it's got its limitations, but it can be useful mm -hmm. when you take into account those limitations, mm -hmm. right? The only problem is when you don't take into account those limitations, then you're basically trying to look at the wrong thing, right? So BMI can definitely answer a question for you, but if you use it as the answer to a different question, it's not not going to be appropriate yeah. right so bmi itself isn't the problem i don't think i would say using bmi the way that we use it is definitely a problem if you want just like a like roughly like roughly where are like where are people in terms of like their body weight bmi is solid if they're not like an athlete or if they're the rock yeah sure yeah, yeah. absolutely but it's not even just like at extremes like that you know like even if you're tracking your own personal bmi that could still, it could give you a, a, a false picture in the same sense that you know how people will just weigh themselves on scales and they'll be like, oh man, I've, I've, I'm a kilogram heavier. That's bad. Like you could, you, your weight can fluctuate. What time of day is it? Yeah. throughout yeah. Your weight fluctuates throughout the day. Yeah. You could like, you, your weight could be different because you've like had a big meal and there's yeah. lots of food in you or it could be different because like any number of reasons, right? So let's use my own BMI as an example. Okay. So. I have all of these stats I'm about to share with you tracked because I go to a gym that's got a machine called a body tracks machine, oh. not a spawn. Basically, it uses it uses electricity, um, sort of well, not electricity. It basically measures the resistance of your body, um, right. and also it measures your weight to kind of estimate your body composition. Right. So these numbers aren't going to be super accurate. Body tracks machines, like the body tracks machine I use. It's good for showing trends, right? That's what I would. That's why I use it for. That's why I do it so regularly because I want to see the, you know, the the train, the change in my body composition over time. I find it interesting and I find it useful. It's my thing. You don't have to do it. 
just don't be down in the comments telling me that I shouldn't be caring about it because mm. I it's my body. Leave me alone. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, there's a there's a good degree of error within these body tracks readings. However, they should be relatively fine for this discussion, right? So I'm just going to read you through a few um, a few different data points here. I've got four. I'm I'm pretty sure I've got four. So September 2020, that was my lowest muscle mass um, on this on this sort of uh, chart that I've got, and that goes back to sometime in I think 20. 2020, maybe 2019. So my height is 185 centimeters. It was consistent. It's going to be that all the time. So we can just skip past my height. So height is 185 centimeters. At that point, I weighed 93.9 kilograms. My fat percentage uh, was 24.2%, which means I had 22.7 kilograms of fat on my body and 67.7 grams of muscle. That left me a BMI of 27.4. Now, October 2020, that was my lowest weight. That's the lowest weight I've had uh, that I've tracked in the past sort of two years. My height was the same, as said. Uh, <laughs> I was uh, 91.9 kilograms. My fat percentage was 22.2%. So as you can see, it's only 2% off that um, lowest muscle one there, even though I was, you know, um, you know, I was a couple, I was a couple kilograms lighter. Um, my fat percentage was 22%, as I said, which meant I had 20.4 grams, uh, kilograms of fat and 68 kilograms of muscle. I know these are a lot of numbers, but I'm just going to have to say them, and then we could switch to using the BMI and it'll be all right, right? My BMI was 26.8. So a good degree lower mm -hmm. than a good degree lower, but not necessarily much difference in terms of yeah. body fat. And definitely, as, as you can see, 68 kilograms of muscle versus 67.7 kilograms of muscle. And Margin a little for bit, error there. Yeah, like, you know, I mean, like yeah. taking into account the error, like it wasn't, there wasn't too much of a, a difference there. So... Hmm. Moving on, January 2022, so at the start of this year, uh, was my highest muscle mass that I tracked. Uh, I weighed, though, 100.6 kilograms. My body fat percentage was 24%, which left me at 24.1 kilograms of body fat, and my muscle was 72.7 kilograms. And my BMI was 29.3, obviously much higher. Mm -hmm. Got more muscle, I've got more fat, slightly. Yeah. So, you know, um, uh, higher BMI. Now, in... Uh, May of 2022 of this year, which is when I felt the healthiest that I felt in the past two years. Uh, my height, uh, my height was the same. Uh, my weight was uh, 94.7 kilograms. My fat percentage was 19.6%, uh, which left me at 18.6 kilograms of fat and 72.4 kilograms of muscle. My BMI was 27.6. So drop again. Yeah. So my 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 BMI 27.6 is higher than when I was at my lowest muscle. It's also higher oh, yeah. than when I was at my lowest weight, yeah. but it's when I felt the healthiest and it's when I was, I, I mean, overall healthier. I had like a lower body fat percentage, 19.6% there. Mm. That was like my lowest body fat percentage of all of these. Uh, I'm fairly sure. Yeah, my lowest body fat, fat percentage of all of these, but I had a higher BMI. That doesn't really give you a good picture, no, right? Like, all. if we just track my BMI over the over the past couple of years, I'm looking at my BMI and I'm like, oh, my BMI is actually higher than it was when I started going to the when I started yeah. going to the gym regularly, and yet I feel healthier and look very different. And 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 what is going on, <laughs> right? Like, like, and obviously you can't necessarily track track health based on you know body fat percentage, but um. You know, I, I, I find generally when I've got, um, when my body fat percentage goes down and my muscle mass goes up, I feel better. I think I look better. And, you know, I've, th th things are easier. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel healthier generally just in, in my body, mm -hmm. all of that sort of stuff outside of the, the, the physical thing. But it gives you an image there, right? Like, my BMI just is going all over the shop mm -hmm. and is not really tracking with my overall physical health, right? Or even like, or your perceived physical health, or my well. perceived yeah, physical yeah, health, yeah, yeah, yeah. or even even you know, like the, the the body fat percentage, which is what BMI is being used to estimate here, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's it's not really the best tool for it, and that's why I would say if you're you know if you're tracking your weight, you're tracking your BMI, and you know you've got like negative feelings towards it, those numbers are not gonna help you at all like they're they're not like if your weight is going up that doesn't mean that you're gaining fat if your weight's going down that doesn't mean that you're losing fat right like you you shouldn't you shouldn't use these numbers um you shouldn't use these numbers if you want to have an accurate picture of your body composition but also like really you shouldn't be tracking those numbers in in that sort of negative way anyway mm. all i'm saying is you're trying to track your weight sort of healthily you know for because there are any number of 
healthy reasons to track to track one's weight and body composition you shouldn't be tracking your weight you should be tracking your body composition and weight and all of these other different mm -hmm. sort of factors it's the same as like if you're gonna try and look at your food intake look at your diet you don't just look at calories right because like, uh, uh, like you could have a cookie and an avocado <laughs> have the exact same like number of calories the same sort of fat yeah. content roughly yeah. The avocado has more nutrients yeah. and the cookie is like a party in your mouth. There are like loads more factors at play. I don't know, man. Avocado is a party in my mouth to me. Look, I like an avocado. Don't get me wrong. I love an avocado. But like a cookie is a very different experience from avocado. That's all I'm saying. Sure.